ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the live webinar teaching elementary math and science in English, opportunities and challenges. My name is V Pham and I will stay with you as the host of the event. So this participant driven workshop is hosted by Ho Chi Minh City TESO and Horizon TESO with the keynote speech delivered by Dr. Nguyen Dong Hai, Associate Professor of Physics at Tennessee Wesleyan University, and Ms. Nguyen Thi Lê Hằng from STEM How Education. I would like to thank you all for joining us today on this special occasion and being ready for the wonderful presentation in this dynamic field of TESO and other special moments of today's event. May I introduce our guest of today's program? From Ho Chi Minh TESO, Dr. Do Ho Nguyen Lok, Chairman. From Horizon TESO, I would like to introduce Mr. Hui Pham, Academic Manager. Mr. Hui Pham, who joins me to host the event of today. And please welcome our keynote speakers, Dr. Nguyen Dong Hai from Tennessee Wesleyan University. And Ms. Nguyen Thi Lê Hằng from Stan Howe Education. Please welcome our TESO trainers. They all play a vital role in providing guidance and delivering instruction to our participants. Thank you for all the lessons and sharings that we know that you have carried out wholeheartedly. So please welcome Mr. Pham Hong Hai. Please welcome Mr. Ngo Nguyen Thiện Tôn. Please welcome Mr. Trần Thanh Vũ. Please welcome Mr. Trần Hải Đăng. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our special guest a warm hand of applause. The workshop is so glad to welcome many value TESO course participants and graduates at home and abroad. Once again, we would like to warmly welcome you to the event. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I take a moment to briefly go through the agenda of today's event? Okay, so um, once again, I will be co-host with uh, Ms. V Pham today as the uh, MC of this program. So I would like to say thank you for your participation here today. So may I introduce um, the uh, agendas of our live webinar today. So first, we will have the workshops delivered by Dr. Nguyen Dong Hai and Ms. Nguyen Thi Lai Hang. And then it will come to the graduation ceremony for our TESO uh, uh, course holder. So, Okay, I think Ms. Wei, you can continue with the agenda you mentioned before. Okay, so um, first of all, an opening remark by Dr. Do Hong Nguyen Lok, Chairman of Ho Chi Minh TESO, and then a presentation delivered by Dr. Nguyen Dong Hai and Ms. Nguyen Thi Lai Hang. Next, we'll be, we will be glad to congratulate our TESO course graduates in the graduation ceremony, which will definitely mark the milestone in their teaching career. And now, may I invite Dr. Do Hong Nguyen Lok to deliver the opening remarks? Please welcome. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, on behalf of Ho Chi Minh City Teacher Association, I am very pleased to welcome all the guests, uh, the teacher trainer and the graduates of the teacher diploma program uh, to join our event today. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, send my special thanks to our uh, keynote speaker, Professor Nguyen Tam Hai from uh, Tennessee Wesleyan University and Ms. Nguyen Lai Hang from STEM Health Education uh, for accepting our uh, invitation to be the guest speaker today. And of course, from the management of Horizon Tishon also will make it happen. So uh, we have just finished the year 2021, which is very uh, difficult. And I think one of the most challenging years in education history. Uh, you know, we changed everything in the way we learn, the way we teach. And the, uh, the pandemics have created the largest disruption of education system, not only in Vietnam, but everywhere in the world. Uh, however, all the learners in, in this program that you have to chosen to move on with your education objective and successfully uh, graduated from the TESOM program and are here today to become 
uh, future teacher of English. So I would like to have a round of applause to congratulate on your hard work and your achievement, and now officially become a member of the Chinese Teacher Association. So um, our association is a professional body. We established by a uh, Chinese City People Committee and led by a group of uh, ESL director, deans, and uh, university leader of around uh, 20 uh, local universities. And we committed to building uh, a, a teacher community where teacher members and colleagues can dis discuss emerging issues in the field. But what we're doing, uh, doing today with the topic of uh, uh, teaching elementary math and science and English opportunity and challenges. And uh, I think the topic today is about uh, teaching math and science, and we also discuss STEM. And uh, STEM education provides students with a well-rounded foundation of skill and to help them to understand a wide range of concepts in, in many industry. So, um, you know, it's predicted that future workers will spend more than twice as much time on job uh, that requiring science, math, and critical thinking than today. And you see the world changing. And we will need to change our skill also to match with it. And the gap between the knowledge generated in the education system and the skill demanded by employer are uh, widening. So overcoming this limitation has required um, a focus on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, STEM, and how you teach that will be the topic today. And uh, 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 our two speaker will share more about, about that. So we're back to your graduate that today is an important day because not only uh, that's the celebration, but also the time to reflect uh, the opportunity and the challenge ahead for yourself, like a teacher of English. So uh, whatever you plan were, I hope that it will become a reality. So the Tison community uh, the association are proud of you and I wish you best of luck and a new journey uh, in, in the new year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lockdown. The speaking guest, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, I totally agree with Dr. Lockdown. The COVID-19 has put education into challenging situation. However, I also see this is the opportunity for us to be here today, no matter where you are, and together, we can find feasible solutions to our education and make it even more effective. So the keynote speaker of today's event is Dr. Wing Donghai, Associate Professor of Physics at Tennessee's Wesleyan University. He's a researcher in physics education, and he has a lot of experience in providing training for teachers who want to teach math and science. And also my deepest appreciations to Ms. Wing Hilehang from STEM Higher Education for coming here today to share your experience with the participants. So I think that this is the time that I will leave the stage to our keynote speakers. And once again, thank you for uh, all of your participation here today to make this special moment come true. Thank you. So I think it's uh, time for Dr. Hai and Ms. Hang to start the workshop today. Thank you very much. All right, good morning, everyone. Have a good day. Um, I'm very glad to be invited to be the guest speaker in, in the workshop today. And this is the very first time that I give a talk to ESL teacher or ESL teacher to be, because I know this is the graduation ceremony of um, several years their teacher to be. Um, I was in Vietnam last month and I had a discussion with Taeson Ho Chi Minh City about the future of ESL teachers, like what can they do after they get the TESOL certificate? Of course, you may say that, um, of course, I will be teaching English, but what else other than that can you do? And I, uh, with my experience of more than 10 years training teachers to teach math and science in English, I, I can foresee that you can do more than just teaching English. You can teach math and science or STEM subjects in general in English. So um, this workshop today is just to provide you with um, an insight into the opportunities and challenges that you will um, 
encounter when you uh, step into teaching STEM in English. So um, that's the general idea of the workshop today. And uh, I'm, I'll be giving this workshop with one of my best students, um, Ms. Lei Hang. Um, I will provide insight from the perspective of a trainer of teachers of STEM in English, and Ms. Lei Hang will provide insight from um, from um, like she she's a um, a teacher of STEM in English for several years, and now she's an um, re, she's a recruiter of teachers of STEM in English. So she will tell you what it takes to be a teacher of STEM in English and what challenges you have to overcome to to do that job mm, uh, to the best of it. <clears throat> All right, so let me start my presentation. My talk today will be teaching elementary math and science in English opportunities and challenges. Um, as I have introduced briefly, we will talk about teaching STEM subjects in English, but I will uh, focus a little more on elementary math and science. Why? Because it's pretty simple and Literally everyone can 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 teach uh, elementary math and science. So uh, this is a, a roadmap to our presentation. It will consist of six parts. First, I will discuss three key uh, questions: the what, the why, and the how of this this of this topic. Then, who's in it? Like, who is capable of doing this job? Then, I will talk about the options opportunities and challenges like what you need to have in order to become a STEM teacher in English. And also, um, I will provide you with a sneak peek into the reality, like what does a STEM lesson in English look like? And then we have a Q&A session. Right. OK, so what is it? It is the teaching of math and science contents using the English language. So here I distinguish between two things, the content and the language that is used to convey that content. OK, so we have to uh, to, to say that this is a, a, a math or science class. So we are teaching math and science content. But instead of using our mother tongue, we are going to use English as a means to convey the idea. Why? Why do we have to use English? Whereas we uh, we can use our mother tongue, which is a better tool to to express ideas in English. I'll talk about a why in the next slide. But um, there are two things that we should distinguish. We when we teach the students, we teach the math and science content and use the language, use the English as the language. That is in contrast with when I train teachers to teach STEM subjects in English. That is the English class that we use the same content as the context for the study of English. So there are two different things. Okay. When I train teacher, I teach them English and use them as the context. And when the teachers come to the classroom and teach the students, they use English as the tool to teach math and science content. Okay. So that is the, the what and now the why. Why do we need to teach the kid um, math and science in English? People may be uh, may may argue that math and sciences are already hard subjects, um, and now if we teach those subjects in English, it is kind of another layer of harm um, of difficulty, and that may be uh, too much for a student to grasp. However, um, I don't I don't think so because human knowledge is already written in English. Now, as a science teacher, I have several, several times come into this situation. Students or my fellow teachers came to me and asked whether I have um, any references for them to research about a topic, a certain topic. I say, it's on, on the internet, just Google it. And they said, yes, I did try Google, Googling it, but I didn't get anything mm, that I, I need. I say, OK, so what are the keywords that you use to Google it? And they, they list a few keywords, and all of them were in Vietnamese. I say, no, please try Googling in English. You see a whole lot 
um, materials, more more than what you need, billions of materials, and their own good materials. So, and I and I tell them that human knowledge is written in English. Um, if you have ever tried googling in Vietnamese and then you Google the same concept in English, you see that you get a lot more. Okay, you get a lot more. So, um, why is that? Because um, English has become a a language of the scientific community. Um, so every knowledge every new knowledge that comes into uh human's mind will be expressed in english at least okay so everything you can you can find you want to find you can find with uh, by by, by uh, searching in english um another reason is uh global learning we were taught we all know that learning should not be limited in the classroom we should also learn from our everyday life, learn from our family, learn from our friends, learn from everyone. However, that is still limited. But the world now is flat and the internet connect us all around the globe. So um, that is to say a student sitting here right here in Vietnam can join a class in the United States, which is on the other side of the globe or everywhere else in the world. And the teacher could be every well-known scientist around the world. They can join any classes. They can um, study with everyone they want to study. As long as they can communicate in English, they can understand the lessons in English. Um, several um, high ranking university like Harvard University or MIT, they have already published all of the lectures onto the Internet. So if you can access those lecture, you don't need really need to go to Harvard or MIT to study. Just sit uh, at the comfort of your home and um, and and receive those lectures online. So knowing English and specifically being able to learn science in English, we enable you to step out of the classroom, step out of your country, and learn with every teacher in the world. The third region, uh, the third reason is um, now more and more students are uh, trying to study abroad, trying to find opportunity to study abroad, and um, you know, <clears throat> and then of course to 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 study abroad, you need to have good English. Um, even though you study in a country where English may not be the first language, they still teach you in English. So known English and um, having some experience with learning math and science in English will be a very good start to uh, get you used to uh, the classroom uh, when you study abroad. And the fourth reason is the standardized test. Of course, to study abroad, you need to take some kind of standardized test to get admitted. But right here in Vietnam, more and more universities are using a standardized test like the SAT or the ACT to um, to recruit students to university. So um, these tests will in the in the near future will attract more and more attention of students. And of course, to do this test, they have to be familiarized with um, the uh, math and science and English. So here are only four out of several reasons why we need to teach kids uh, or at least familiarize themselves with the, um, uh, the subjects in English. Now I'll talk about the how. OK, so now you know what teaching STEM in English is and why we should do so. But how, how are we going to do it um, when all of the schools in Vietnam now are teaching in Vietnamese? So how, how can we introduce uh, STEM in English to, uh, to these schools? Well, we'll get there. We'll get to the point where we teach them math and science and English, but we do not necessarily do it in one step. Let's uh, consider three things that makes up a lesson. The presentation, the teacher and the student. We have um, I can I can uh, I can classify uh, it, it into four steps. The first step is 
to show the presentation in English or at least the vocabulary and the teacher and students to interact in Vietnamese. So this is just one step further than what we are doing right now. What we're doing right now is the teacher explain in Vietnamese and the student discuss and respond to the teacher in Vietnamese and the presentation or the, or the whiteboard writing is in Vietnamese. But now let's write in English or just write in Vietnamese, but introduce the vocabulary. That is the first step to, to get the student familiarized with the, the, the technical terms of math and science in English. But if the student is good enough, then we can use the home presentation in English, just like the one we are talking about here and uh, discuss in Vietnamese. That's the first level, the lowest level. Now, if the students and if the English level of the students and the teachers are a little better, we can use the presentation in English, but still explain the lesson and discuss with the student in Vietnamese. Another step further is to give presentation in English and the teachers say, uh, explain the lesson in English and the students discuss among themselves or respond to the teacher in, uh, in, in Vietnamese. Um, and the highest level of this is everything in English. This is the goal uh, that we, we, we are striving for. Okay, so we are striving for a classroom where we use English 100%. Um, so you can see, see that every school, I, I believe that every school can start at the level one. And then if uh, the English level of the students and teacher improve, then we can move on to level two and so on. So we, there is a way to do it, um, but, uh, as long as we we know where we are at and what level is best for our school. All right, so who's in this? Who's in this business? Like who can teach math and science in English? So this is the goal. Um, we want to become we want to have teachers of math and science in English. So how can we have this cohort of teachers? Well, there are two pathways that will lead to this goal. We can take math and science teachers and train them in English so that they can teach the subjects in English. This is the pathway that I have been doing in the past more than 10 years. I have um, offered classes for math and science teachers to, to teach subjects in English. So I I offer English classes for them, like specialized English, like English for math, English for physics, English for chemistry, English for biology. And I take those teachers, those subject teachers and train, give them some intensive English training to, uh, to become teacher of math and science in English. Now, the second pathway is that we take an English teacher and give them some math and science training so they can teach those subjects in, in English. Now, the second pathway is more difficult in my perspective because um, training a math teacher some English so they can teach math in, Eng in English is easier than training an English teacher enough math knowledge and skills so that they would teach math in English, right? Um, because the, the amount of content of math and science is more than the amount of content of English needed for, for a teacher. So that's why I choose pathway number one instead of pathway number two in the past 10 years. However, in the talk today, as I say, I will focus on teaching elementary math and science. And what is special about elementary math and science? Well, they're simple. They're simple. They're things that almost everyone knows that is like um, our everyday knowledge of, of our life. So with that knowledge, um, for example, in math, we teach the kids about uh, counting, about addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, division. And in science, we, talk, we teach the kid about light, about sound, about um, a water cycle, all of those. 
are very fundamental knowledge that almost everyone know or can learn in a short time. So that is why in um, in this talk, I will focus in uh, for, for focus on the second pathway. Like we take English teacher and give them some math and science training, of course, with some technical English training, um, so that they can teach math and science in English. By English teachers, I mean everyone who teaches English. It does not need to be uh, someone who graduates from the University of Education English department. No, it doesn't need to be that way. Uh, it could be any people, any person having trained to be an English teacher, like the ESL teacher to be, who are graduating today. Uh, you may be an engineer, you may be an accountant, you may be a businessman, and you're good at English and you have the love of teaching. So you took the TSOM co courses to become an uh, English teacher. And now I'm here to tell you that you can do more than that. You can be a math and science teacher in English. Okay, so what are the opportunities for uh, for a teacher of STEM in English in Vietnam right now. I will tell you that there's an increasing population of students in need of learning math and science in English. How do I know? Because during the years I was in Vietnam, I was invited to several schools to offer lectures in physics in English for them. Um, and there are more and more schools who are wanting to do this. And I think uh, Ms. Le Hang will know about this better than me. So. Um, Lehan, could you give uh, the audience some insights about uh, the state of the art uh, of, uh, of teaching STEM in English? Uh, OK, thank you, Professor Dong Hai. Um, so first, uh, hello, everyone. My name is Han Nguyen, and uh, let me introduce a little bit about me. Uh, I am a Professor Dong Hai student, and, uh, Currently, I'm working at STEM House Education as a science um, teacher, uh, a math teacher, and a uh, coordinator of international secondary program and teacher coaching. Um, it's my pleasure of being here in a beautiful Saturday morning to discuss with you uh, about the pathway of teaching math and science in English. Uh, because it's my first time, so a little bit nervous now. Uh, all right, so um, actually, you know that um, the models of teaching math and science for primary students have been becoming more and more popular for several years. Uh, I believe that you used to hear or see at least one organization with this model, right? Uh, it could be a public or private school, a language center or a STEM center, or I call it an academic center to distinguish with the language center. All right. So, um, you know, then are the teaching models similar or different from each other? You think? Uh, yes, of course, they are different, right? Uh, there is a wide variety of teaching programs and models for schools and standards to choose and follow. It may depend on what they want and what they have. I think so. For example, for example, uh, many language centers have uh, math and science classes for students, uh, especially for young kids, as I know. Um, and they may follow an international program, but uh, they focus on building up the vocabulary and academic language skills based on math and science concepts. It means that the contents may become blurred without many deep investigations, explanations, and academic skills. Right? Uh, however, in academic centers, for example, in my center, STEM House, we follow the international curriculum from uh, primary school to secondary school to high school. Uh, we teach students contains math and science in the medium of English. So you can imagine, you can remember how you used to learn math and science when you used to be a student. Uh, 
in your school in Vietnamese so that uh, that the, like the way we teach our students uh, we teach them contains using English yeah and we also focus on the skills in math in science all right um, yeah and in the schools in uh, public school and private school uh, maybe it uh, a little bit more complicated uh, depending on you know that uh, the schools may use the fixed program or they may uh, build up their own programs uh, based on um, you know the, the level of students or what they want to fo focus on right okay so uh, if you want to become a math and science teacher in future I think uh, you should do some research and see which is suitable for you Okay, so that was about uh, math uh, and science teaching model in Ho Chi Minh City. As I know, thank you. All right, thank you, Miss Tang. Yeah. Um. So there are many many centers in Ho Chi Minh City in specific, uh, that are offering programs or classes science and English, and they are in high needs of teachers. As far as I know, they 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 are always seeking for qualifying teachers to teach this subject in English, and still they they couldn't find enough. Um, another opportunity is that the student's English level has increased to the point where this is possible, according to the data of um, ETS Education for Testing Service. Um, in 2007, the year that I took the TOEFL test, TOEFL IBT test to study abroad, um, the average score of Vietnamese test taker was 72. And 10 years later, in 2017, the average score of Vietnamese test taker was 84. So it has increased by 12 points, which is a very significant amount um, in just 10 years. And I don't have the up to date data, but I believe that in the past five years from 17 to 22, it should have increased even more like to 90 or so. So we see that there's an, a rapid increase in students of um, proficiency of English. And that is the time that is a good time for us to introduce these subjects in English to them. And of course, with uh, their current level of English, I believe the students can, are ready to receive lessons of math and science in English um, at some some level, according to my four four level model. Um, many teachers are seeking for alternative path for the career, as you can see, teachers now are facing a lot of pressures from teaching the subjects like um, they have to teach a very hard curriculum very mathematical focusing kind of science so uh, and the goal is that for the students to to get high score in the exam and then to forget everything just one day after the exam so many students uh, many teachers have Told me that they're bored of that kind of teaching. That is not the kind of teaching they are. They uh, they 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 want to do. So I say, well, let's try teaching something else. Let's try something else. Let's try teaching those subjects in English, and teach the students according to the curriculum of well-developed uh, educational system like American or European U European um, textbook. See what uh, what's the difference. And um, and I know and I know that many many people are becoming ESL teacher from several careers, like people who took the uh, uh, the the TESOL certificates to be ESL teachers. And this is also one alternative path for you if you if you love English and also love teaching the kids to explore the world around them. Um, selected schools and private STEM centers offering international curricular like IGCSE or IB or A level AEP, a lot of programs to students. So, Ms. Hang obviously know this more, more than me. Um, so,
some universities are offering bachelor's uh, programs in English and international programs. I know Dr. Lok here is the vice president of UEF and he is also the head of the international collaboration. He offer a lot of international programs like students sitting in Vietnam can take um, uh, courses and be be uh, accredited um, in in UK or many uh, other countries. Of course, those programs have to be in English. So um, students have a need to study subjects in English to get used to international um, environment of learning. Now, uh, and much more. And if you don't see if you don't see in this list any opportunity that fit you, create your own opportunity because if you don't see the opportunity for yourself, create your own one. All right, so um, what are the challenges that you have to face when you enter this path of teaching and what does it require to to become uh, to become a STEM teacher in, in English. Miss Hang, she has several years of being a teacher coaching for STEM teachers in English. So she shares some, some of her insights about this. Uh, yes, thank you, Professor. Um, uh, fortunately, I have many chances with working with young teachers. Uh, actually, I love working with the young teachers because uh, I see their passion. I can learn many new things from them, and uh, also I can be reflected myself. Yeah, so uh, you know, among the good math and science teachers in my center, there are some teachers who are English teachers. I mean, they didn't graduate from math or science education. Yes, however, they always have good progress and performance. When I observe them, I draw some conclusions I want to share with you today. And actually, I don't call it uh, challenges that you have to overcome. I just, well, I just tell you uh, maybe what do, you, what do you do you need? What do you need to prepare if you want to uh, follow the pathway to become a math or science teacher? All right, so um, if you ask me, uh, can I become a good math or science teacher? Uh, I wasn't really good at math or science when I was a student. Oh, my answer is, um, oh, that's not the key. That's not the key. So what's the key? I think the first one is um, you need to love teaching math and science, math or science for kids. Yes, of course, right? Uh, we need to love whatever we do. Um, but uh, why do I say that? Because you know that, because um, uh, we we are not trained to become a math or science teacher. It means that we will, we, it will take time to, to be trained, to, be lear to learn and to practice more, to follow the the pathway to becoming math or science teachers and especially for kids so you need to yeah so it takes time it may take several months or a year so yeah uh, you we need to love teaching math science for kids to follow the way all right uh so next um of course uh, to be open-minded to learn is very important uh, as I say, um, if you said that I wasn't good at math or science, I, I nervous. I feel so nervous because uh, I, I I don't believe that I can do it well. But so it is not a key. Uh, it's not really important. Uh, you just need to be open minded to learn. Yeah, there are many things we need to learn, right? Um, especially you know that uh, maybe your major, uh, your main major is about engineering your main major is uh, about english is about science but 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 our major is not about math education or science education in english so there are many things that we need to learn here to teach to teach math or science in english yes so to be open-minded very important uh, the next one 
um, yes, uh, it will be much easier if you can find the appropriate training courses or the coaches that you can learn from them. Um, for training courses, actually, there are some training courses you can search from the internet um, for STEM teacher or uh, science or math teacher, but uh, usually they are about teaching particular programs. Yeah, for example, I know some courses from Cambridge teaching the co curriculum of Cambridge programs. Yeah, uh, so I mean that there, there is a wide variety of uh, teaching courses. So choose which one, which is suitable for you is important. Uh, yes, so let's begin with the general. If you think that we don't know mm, too much about teaching, and then go deeper and deeper. And um, uh, if you can find the, uh, a coach which can uh, which you can learn from him or from her, is what is better. For example, Professor Dom Hai, uh, he has a lot of experiences in coaching teacher. Yes. Uh, you, we can you can ask him about uh, yeah what you want to do and what you should do to begin. Yes, and the next one, uh, I think it will be better if we start from the lowest level. Yeah, um, it means that um, for example, me me um, I am a physics teacher. My background is physics education. I was not trained to be a math teacher, but uh, because I have to be, uh, I, I have to become a math teacher. So uh, I, uh, but I, I don't really feel that I, 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 com I feel confident that I can do it well. Uh, of course, uh, math in uh, for primary school, especially for grade one or grade two are not is not too hard, right? But uh, you know that there are some things that we need to focus. For example, um, the prior knowledge that students have or the main objectives or the skills that we that they that the curriculum they want students to 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 get, yeah, you know, what they are. So I think that uh, it is better if you start uh, start practicing or start researching from the lowest level to the higher and higher. OK, and finally, I think that uh, with the open mind, uh, with an, an open mind, uh, well, a good preparation. And uh, if you keep practicing, you can do it. So don't worry about it. If you love, just just do it. OK, thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Lehan, for your very uh, deep insight into what it takes to be a math and science teacher in English based on her own experience. Um, all right, okay, so we have talked about it. Now let's take a look at it to see what a math and science lesson for elementary student in English look like and um, what the teaching method is to engage the students in learning these topics. So Ms. Hang will continue to share some of her lessons that uh, are being taught at STEM House Education. Now, Ms. Hang, please continue. All right, uh, thank you. So I would like to share with all of you some uh, uh, samples about math and science lessons in my school. So let's start with the uh, sample about math. Uh, this one is about geometry. Uh, the basic 2D shapes. As you see, this one is the lesson notes. And here, uh, this lesson is for IPA students. IP is uh, international primary and A is the lowest level. It is equivalent to students who are learning in grade number one. Okay, the very lowest, the lowest level, all right. And in this lesson, students will, uh, the objectives uh, of this lesson is to recognize, is to distinguish and call down the name of the common 2D shapes, circle, rectangle, square, and triangle, as you see on the screen. Okay, so uh, yes, 
the first activity, teacher will let students distinguish curved line and straight line. All right. So for what? So after that, teacher will introduce them the common 2D shapes. Circle, a circle is a door, a door by a curved line is made uh, by a curved line, uh, a square, a triangle, a rectangle, right, is made by the straight lines and we call them the sides. Okay, so in the first step, students are introduced uh, the name and you know they can they can get the the image of the shapes that right? they can also you know that distinguish them right curve and straight. Okay, thank you. The next one, and after that, students experience some activities to. Uh, uh, like to reveal the name and to distinguish them. For example, here the first one is the game that students uh, uh, take turn to uh, to pick up the correct shape, and uh, you know the teacher will call that shape, and students will pick the correct one. And the second game is that uh, you know that uh, a student will draw a the a picture a shape, and that. The another student will have to guess what it is and call it out. All right. And after that, uh, they will do some tasks in the lesson note. Right. The first one is so easy. Just join the dots uh, from the shapes. Uh, then trace the name of each shape. You know that students in uh, grade one, they don't know how to write. So just trace the word. All right. So trace to to make friends with the shape, that is the simple step. And the second one, a little bit harder, read, read. For example, color the triangles. They have to recognize the triangle and then color them. All right, okay. And a little bit harder, if you can see here, D, color all the shapes which are not square. It's a little bit harder than before. Okay, so I mean that students uh, experience their uh, different activities to uh, like uh, practice the new uh, concepts that they learn. Okay. And after that, uh, yes, after that, because um, in STEM house and in the international curriculum, they want to, they always try to connect the what students learn with the real activity uh, real life so in task three uh do you see name the shape that is outline each picture so there are some common things that students can see right and they have to name the shape right, that you can see here okay all right and the last activity is called hands-on activity uh, it is the house, uh, make your own house like this. So students will uh, use the shapes that they just learned to build their own house. Yes. Uh, and then actually, you know that when you teach them, you may see that they will make different houses basing on the shapes that you give them. Yeah. And then they have to write down to make my house. I stick how many rectangles, how many circles, how many squares, how many triangles, and they, they will they will talk a little bit about about their houses. Okay, yeah. So that is a lesson about math uh, for students in the lowest level in my center. So you see that the first step is uh, like a little bit get lo closer to the topic and then introduction maybe some activities to uh, let students um, make friends with the concept practice and then get higher higher practice the skill uh, connect to the real life activity hands-on activity okay so that is math um, lesson uh, the next one I also would like to introduce you. Uh, okay, this one is the science lesson. 
for IPA2, okay, uh, the topic is sound and the lesson we hear with our ears. And so the objective is that uh, students will uh, uh, recognize that we use our ears, recognize that the, the part of the body that we use to hear sound, that is the, the these are the ears, and call the name of the body, uh, the part. Okay, and a uh, student will, um, a small part student will uh, distinguish, no, uh, maybe recognize the difference between high sound and low sound. Okay, so these are the main objectives. Uh, so the first activity uh, is the warm up game. Students will play a game to uh, distinguish different sound. Yeah. So they will be, you know, that um, we have warm up games. So let students uh, be more interested with the lesson. And uh, they may guess what they've learned today. OK, about the sales and different sales around. And then teachers will lead. Teachers will lead into the lesson. So there are many sales around us. So how can we hear them? Which part of the body we can use to hear sound and introduce the part? Of the body that is our the ear. Uh, yes, the next slide, please. Yes, thank you. All right. So, uh, students also practice the new vocabulary and the new structure. Okay. So you can see the connection between teaching, content, and language here. Yeah, with the young kids. And uh, in the next activity, students practice. Uh, you know that. Uh, make friends with the new vocabulary ears uh, and the, they will uh, play a game to recognize the ears of many animals humans and animals ears okay yeah yeah and uh, the investigation how do our ears work uh, of course uh, students in uh, grade one they cannot know exactly how our ears work but uh, they will try to use their hands to do like this and like this and then know what happens and then we they can say how they feel yeah to hear the sound okay so they can know yeah how how we can do to to hear the sound better all right and the last activity uh, and after that practice practice uh, with the lesson note and the last activity is also always the experiment. Um, you know, experiments is one of the most important thing in science, right? And how we can how we teach students to conduct a, an experiment in science here. Uh, this one is called a music show. The objective is uh, to this to to recognize the high and low sound. OK, so uh, students have uh, identical charts and they pour different um, different amount of water into identical charts. They use a spoon to uh, make the sound and hear the sound and then see the different sounds made by the different charts and make a simple conclusion. OK, so what will uh, what teachers will uh, teach students during the experiments. First one, uh, students recognize the, that different amount of water makes different sounds. Which one makes higher sound and which one makes lower sound? Okay, and then also we. Sorry, okay. And now we build up for students the, um, you know, that scientific inquiry skill yeah, what is uh, a fair test what do students do to make an experiment fair yes we need to can we use a big char and a small char no right we need to use identical chars one thing different here is the amount of water we use the same spoon the same char like as you can see on the screen, the picture uh, some students do at home in online classes. Okay, 
yeah. So we try to build up the skills in uh, uh, each subject for students from the lowest level to a higher and higher level. OK, so that is what we, we do in uh, science class. Uh, thank you. <laughs> do you see the connection between um, be between teaching math, uh, science and English, right? Especially for young kids. Yeah, because teaching for young kids, um, you know that uh, math and science are the basic concept. So yeah, the most important I think is to like to be open mind and learn uh, to 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 teach them that so just but the knowledge is so simple thank you all right thank you mr lehang um for a very detailed description of what a math and science lesson looks like and uh, i think that already gives you a good uh image about uh teaching math and science in english you see, for elementary kids, um, the the knowledge is pretty simple. Everyone knows why uh, we can hear things, and everyone can learn to do this kind of experiment. Um, so it doesn't take you much effort to teach math and science, even though you were not good at those subjects at school when you were students. But now, uh, with English, with the passion, of teaching and uh, the love for kids you can obviously do this kind of thing so that's why we are trying we are here to persuade you that you can do this job you can do this well and it doesn't it, it doesn't take um your whole lot of effort as you used to imagine about it all right so um, that's pretty much the end of our, our presentation. So we want to save time for question and answers. So if you have any question or any any other information you want to know about this topic, please um, uh, please raise your questions, and we'll be happy to to answer your questions. A huge thank for the outstanding presentation from our speakers. Thank you, Dr. Dong Hai and Ms. Lei Hang for your engaging speech with meaningful information. And I hope that this presentation has provided you with some insights of this growing aspect of TESO and helped you uh, sparkle some ideas for your future teaching. Everyone, can we send them a big hand of applause to appreciate their time and dedication for joining us today? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for your attention. So ladies and gentlemen, from now, it is your time to share any comments or question with our presenters. Should you have anything in mind, kindly use the raise hand function so that we can better facilitate. OK, so in case you have any questions or comments for our presenters, you can always use the chat box to post your questions or you can turn on the microphone and uh, share your concern, your questions directly. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, so it's time for us to discuss and and speak more about this topic. OK, it's a great opportunity. OK, so I, I got the first concern because I just want to uh, to speak from my um, scenario from my case. OK, so in the past, you know, like uh, children, when they learned English, they just focus on you know some basic communicative purpose. However, these days when they learn at primary school, they, they need to learn more, like you mentioned, math and subject. So from your experience, Dr. Ha and Dr. Dong Hai and Ms. Lei Han, do you think that young children, they, they are willing to, to take in those information or not? Or is there any language barrier and also knowledge barrier when it comes to teaching science to kids? All right, thank you for, for your question, Mr. Hui. Uh, and I think because Ms. Hong worked more closely to kids um, in science, so I'll, I'll let her answer first and then I'll give my perspective. Uh, so Ms. Hong, please go ahead. Yes, okay, thank you for your question. So first one is about the language barrier. I mean, uh, because you know that uh, children nowadays in the big cities, for example, in Ho Chi Minh City, I think that uh, the in, you know that the English level of children are quite good 
yeah the children that uh, that we are we are teaching yeah they are good to 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 learn uh math and science in english because they have many opportunities to to learn english as well as to to learn the contents and to you know that uh, uh use the internet to do many things from the young kids so uh, yes yeah they can they can understand quite well yeah very good interact very well with uh, teachers and with the lesson so I think that there are not too many language barriers uh, in the big cities. I think so. Uh, but uh, how about uh, you mean that the knowledge barrier? Yeah, yeah. I don't think we have any knowledge barrier here because you know that uh, for me, for example, if, if I have a chance to to learn these interesting things like the children now they can do, I will be so happy to to do it so no knowledge barrier yeah so and and you know that when i uh, when i uh, when i teach them or i talk to them uh, i i i i recognize that uh children nowadays they are willing to ask questions yeah they, they can ask me any questions and they can say oh teacher i don't understand i don't know i i want to ask you how why yeah any questions for me so yeah no uh, not any uh, knowledge barrier that i think so <laughs> okay all right thank you miss hung for your answers okay so here's my perspective many people believe that um, learning math and science is one layer of difficulty these subjects are difficult these subjects are tough and now learning those concepts in english is another layer of difficulty However, I don't think so. Okay, now let me tell you this example. I'm your teacher and I step into class and say, hello class, today we're gonna learn about celestial sphere. You know what it is? Celestial sphere. You don't know, it, right? So we are learning new concept. Okay, but uh, imagine this situation. I step into the class and say, hello class, today we are learning about Tinko. You know what Tinko means? Of course you don't. That's why we have this lesson, right? So Tinko and celestial sphere are the same thing. And they, and you don't know um, any of them, right? So learning about Tinko or learning about celestial sphere is the same. It's just a name we give to something. And what is that something? We're going to define it in the lesson today. We explore it in the lesson today. So teaching kids the celestial sphere is not more difficult than teaching kids about out okay but the benefit of that is that the kids know that thing is called the celestial sphere so when they want to learn more about it they can go to google and type in celestial sphere they'll get billions of very well developed lessons about the topic you know what they they will find when we when they go to the uh, go to google images and search for the image of Tinko. You know what they they will find? They will find the toilet because there's something called go, go, toilet. This is my experience when I was teaching this lesson, and I went to Google Image to search for the image to put in my lesson. It happened Tinko. It shows me yes, the first twenty images was about the thing that I'm looking for, but starting the 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 later images, it showed me the toilet. Okay, uh, but I type in celestial sphere, it gives me billions of good images of the celestial sphere. Okay, so that's the difference between um, searching for knowledge in English and in Vietnamese, and that's the reason why we should uh, learn English, at least the vocabulary, to access the, the, the information on the internet about the topic. Okay, so that's my point, like learning about new things you don't know it either uh, anyway you don't know it anyway so let's learn in english instead of learning in vietnamese yeah. thank you yeah, so thank you for your sharing uh, i can see that le wang Yao is having a questions uh, so can you turn on your mic hello everyone okay uh, good afternoon uh, dr nguyen dong hai uh, 
Uh, firstly, I'm so sorry because I can't uh, turn on my camera because uh, my kids is look look like so so suck. I'm so sorry. Uh, and secondly, uh, I truly miss you, Mr. Nguyen Dong Hai, because uh, the last time I missed you in the uh, Nhân Sinh Club of uh, mm. Venerable uh, Yak Minh Luật. Yeah, I truly miss you. Uh, I have a question. Uh, I'm working as a physics teacher in Vietnam. So mm. how can I uh, how can I teach my students about uh, language skills, for example, English skills, uh, so that I uh, compare, compare uh, this one into the lessons, or I uh, so that I um, uh, have a separate, uh, separate uh, lesson, a separate topic uh, in, uh, in, in the periods of, uh, of my teaching schools. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Chow. Uh, Mr. Chow was also my one of my students in Ho Chi Minh City University of Education Physics Department. Um, so I understand your question is that um, you are a physics teacher and you want to teach your students English skills as well, right? Mm, okay, there are two ways of doing this. You can offer them separate English lesson that is outside of your uh, physics lesson or you can incorporate English lesson into physics lesson. Remember the four level that I introduced earlier? The first level, you still teach exactly the same way as you what you're doing so far. The only difference is that you introduce the vocabulary to the students in English. For example, today you teach the students about gravity. So uh, write the lessons on the board in Vietnamese, teach in Vietnamese, discuss with students in Vietnamese, but you will put the parentheses and say jump look means gravity okay and uh and a few other terms that's the very first step and i think you can do immediately right uh, in your classroom or if your student is a little bit better about uh is a little bit better in english then you can start presenting the lesson in english and and explain to them in vietnamese so they will have the the, the kind of the, the mapping in the mind. They look at the sentences on the slide in English and then they listen to your explanation of that sentence in Vietnamese. They start building the connection between the two languages and that's one way you can build the English skill. Or you can uh, you can also explain to students some of the English structure that is used in your in your lesson. So there are several ways we can teach students both content and English skill at the same time. And that is a perfect way for the student to uh, to learn subjects in English. Thank you. OK, thanks again for your sharing. So there is a lot of questions on the chat box. So the first question from Miss Ngoc Anh, uh, what does a STEM classroom look like? Can you help her answer that question? I think Miss Hang is better at this question, so. Uh, OK, so uh, about a question about STEM class, you know, um, actually STEM is 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 not uh, a teaching method, right? STEM is a teaching approach, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a teaching That's approach. Yeah. So there are many things that a STEM class can be. You know, it depends on what it it, it focuses on. For example, uh, computer science or robotic or science or math. Or so it's really hard for me to answer you what a STEM class is. Uh, do you understand what I mean, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, uh, for example, in my center, in my school, uh, we are focusing uh, when when we uh, when we teach students, we, we uh, have the STEM courses for students. We focus on science and math. So we build up uh, the math and science skills uh, in during the projects as well as some business skills for students. So yeah, we use the projects so students can uh, work together in about weeks, a months. Mm, and teacher now is a coach and then they have to uh, work together to plan uh, the idea and then present, uh, make a presentation, and then uh, make the real product, for example, and then uh, uh, try to connect that with 
a business idea, for example. So that is what my center is doing about STEM or uh, we call B STEAM. But uh, in other center or other school, it's quite different depending on what they are focusing on. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think there are a few slides ahead. We had a photos of uh, what a STEM class looks like in in STEM house. So let me come back to the slide and show you what it this is a teacher training course at STEM house, yeah. which is the, one of the best one uh, I've known. And yes, OK, so here are students at STEM house. They are exploring things. So um, the 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 fundamental difference between a STEM classroom and a regular classroom is that students sit in groups, in small groups, and they use by doing instead of listening to the uh, to the teacher. They learn by exploring things. They learn by interacting with their peers and working in small group to discover um, a topic or to um, to learn about something and then present to 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 the rest of the class. So that's the. Um, I hope that will answer you about what a STEM classroom would look like. And I agree with Miss Hang that STEM is not a teaching method. It is a teaching approach uh, in which the students will not just listen to the lesson. Um, the student will learn the knowledge by doing projects to solve real life problems. And they do it in collaboration with the peers and with the guidance of the teachers. That's STEM education. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Dong Hai and Ms. Lai Hang. So a second question, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, is it from Mr. Dai Zhang? And this question is for Ms. Hang. Could you share some useful tools or software that support in planning math lessons as well as teaching them? Okay, so actually I, I sent the answer in chat box. Uh, hello, Dai Zhang. Uh, actually, there are many tools that you can use to learn and teach math. Uh, depending on what level of students, uh, what topic and what do you want to do in your class. So it would be better if you can tell me more details. You can send me uh, in uh, via my email huh? later. I will send you what I know, the, the teaching tools. Uh, so sorry, I see some questions about STEM. So maybe Mr. Adam Hai can answer. Uh, what qualities do STEM students have upon graduation at different levels of education? I'm sorry, what kind of um, skills? What, uh, quali uh, qualities. Mm -hmm. Qualities do STEM students have upon graduation at different levels in education? All right, OK, let me escape from this uh, slide so I can see the questions presenting all right so now i can see the full so dr dong hai you can see the question from miss ngo thi mong ni what qualities do stem students have upon graduation at the different levels in education okay i saw the question uh what qualities do stem students have upon graduation different levels in education well, because as I say, STEM is just a teaching approach. It is not a program. It is not a teaching method. So I I don't think there's a definition of STEM students. But I can yeah, try to understand the idea that STEM students are students who learn the subjects in the STEM approach. OK, so learning in the STEM approach, the student will gain not only the knowledge, but also how to find the knowledge, how to work in groups, uh, and how to present their findings. So other than the knowledge, they will develop the, the skills of a scientist um, to explore a topic and and present the idea about a topic. Um, if you ask about different levels, so, so let's say if the student learn uh, to do STEM project in elementary school, what they developed is first the curiosity about um, life around them. Second is the uh, um, enthusiastic to explore things around them. And third is the ability or, or the skills to find the 
information they need and to discuss with the peers to find the um, the answer to the questions. Um, so I think those are the kind of the skills that a student will get when they uh, they, um, they learn STEM lessons. Uh, Ms. Tang, do you have any uh, add-ons to this? I totally agree. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your answers. And uh, there is another question. May I ask our lecturer, Mr. Hai and Ms. Hang, for recommendation on job offer for this field on teaching math and science in English? All right. Job offer. So, Hang, this is your, your field. Uh, all right. So, as I say, you know, now in Ho Chi Minh City, um, there are many schools as well as the uh, private centers, a language center, I mean, and uh, academic center, for example, STEM centers, uh, for example, my center. Uh, they are the um, programs uh, teaching math and science in English. So you can uh, yeah, apply, uh, apply to this program. So, uh, uh, I can show you uh, my contact so you you can uh, for more information you can contact me via my email or also Mr. Dong Hai feel free to ask any questions and uh, any application yeah yeah let me share the slide with um, the uh, the contact information of us so you can reach out to us after this seminar and we'll provide you with uh, more information about things that interest you so uh, you can contact either me or miss hang or both using email or phone number or zello number uh, I, I see a question about what the teacher training course looks like to train a teacher to teach math and science and English. So uh, I'm going to share you a uh, a lesson or yeah, a lesson, one one section in my curriculum that I developed to train teachers to teach science and English. So let you finish this context slide and then I'll share you that one. OK, now I'm going to share you the uh, the sample lesson. What a lesson for a training teacher to teach science in English look like. All right, so this is it. Um, in this course, this is the course that I just developed, um, and it is called the English for Natural Sciences. Um, the target of this course are teachers of science in elementary school and middle school. OK, so there are about 15 units, about 15 topics of science. The first topic is the building blocks of matter. So each lesson or each unit will consist of several parts. The first part is vocabulary. Of course, we provide you with the vocabulary or the technical terms that are used in science in this topic. Then comes a reading. Uh, a reading uh, exercise to familiarize yourself with the vocabulary and also to uh, improve your reading skill, reading comprehension skills. Uh, because this is uh, unit one, so I will start with the lowest level of reading skill, that is uh, to read a sentence and find the missing words. And then comes the writing. The writing is when you're going to you, you practice using the grammar, the English grammar that you learn to write um, science content. Okay, science content. For example, air is a mixture of several gases uh, and so on. Um, and then comes some science question for discussion. So you're gonna discuss or and explain, of course, in English, these questions. Then uh, there's a listening section um, to practice your listening skill. The goal is that you can listen to YouTube videos about uh, the topic of interest. So you can choose the, uh, 
the appropriate video to show your teacher, uh, to show your, to your students when you teach them in the classroom. So there are a few listening comprehension um, uh, exercises in each unit. Listen to fill in the blank, listen to answer the question, and listen to open uh, to answer open question uh, ended questions. The, the last one is further reading. This is for, for you to further develop your reading skills. And that is it. That is one unit of, uh, of uh, lessons in my class. Stenhouse website. I could just send her the website. All right, next okay, question, please. So, uh, there are a lot of questions here on our chat box. So let's take a look at um, the questions about STEM chain course. Like, um, is there any course that we, non-science or math qualification, could take to be able to teach STEM in school? So can you help um, them answer the question? Okay, yeah. Um, I have been offering a lot of classes in the past 11 years for our teachers uh, of, of math and physics and chemistry or in biology to teach the subject in, in English. However, those classes are for subject teachers already, and these are English-focused classes to train them the English skills to teach those subjects. Now, this is a new course that I am developing. That is a course for English teachers who have very little or no a math and science background to teach those subjects. And um, I think it's not so different from the courses that I just showed you, like uh, um, the, the, the sample lesson that I just showed you on the PDF file. That is the lesson that I used in the newly developed course to, um, to train math and science teacher to teach subjects in English. Of course, I cannot teach you everything you need about math and science so that you can go into the classroom and teach, but um, I teach you the fundamentals, I mean, the, the popular topics in those subjects. So whenever you, um, the, those are the topics that you're most likely encounter in your first few months of teaching math and science. And then after that, you can teach um, other topics with the help of, uh, of other like uh, subject teachers. And I think it's not too difficult to learn elementary math and elementary science to teach the, the kids. So um, I think you shouldn't worry about that. Um, Miss Wing Huang Vinh Han asked, where can I get the training courses for teaching science in English? Well, uh, watch out for announcement from, I think, Horizon Tissot. We have planned to start offering this course like uh, later in this year. All right, now. Um, uh, so I see a question uh, from Dung uh, Hun Fu, right? Uh, so could I ask you some questions? So how do you deal with a class with mixed abilities? And in some cases, you may encounter students who are not really paying attention to the lesson. And what you do to get them engaged? Uh, all right. Um, so. Uh, Actually, I see a question, uh, a question before how many students in an ideal class, uh, STEM class. Uh, actually, uh, in my school, uh, there, there are about, about 12 students in a class for students in uh, grade uh, from number one to grade number three, about 12 to uh, 15. Uh, students, so one teacher and one teaching assistant can yeah can deal with this with them with these students. Uh, yes, I think it's okay for for a teacher uh, can handle them. But you know, yes, I agree. Uh, if there are mixed abilities in a class, and you know that uh, students who cannot. Uh, pay attention in your class is a real problem and and when i when i work with children i see that i recognize that nowadays children have uh, many problems many stories yeah and 
when I just observe them, I just observe their behaviors in class. I just say that, oh, he he didn't pay attention. He tried to, you know, like uh, like I do something. Don't wanna he he didn't wanna hear. Uh, but when when I when I when I talk to him or when I talk to her, I know the story behind, and 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 then I know how to fix. So uh, if you add me an advice, so I just say that uh, try to find a reason. If you can, uh, talk to him or talk to her privately. Yes, like the friends, and see. Oh, why do you why do you do that? Can you tell me what do you think? What do you like? And then you will know what you should do in your class. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your sharing. Because of the uh, limit of the time, so I have to say sorry for those last questions. You can discuss further with Dr. Ramha and Ms. Lenghang via their contact. So thank you for your participation in this Q&A section. We have received a lot of questions from the audiences and also the valid answer from our speakers. Now, I would like to invite all of you to take the group photo with Dr. Dong Hai and Ms. Lei Hang to memorize these wonderful moments together. So please turn on your camera to take a photo with our speakers. We do appreciate if you can turn your uh, camera to take a photo with us. Okay, I can see a lot of people here. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so could you place your, uh, could you please raise your thumbs up like this to take the first photo together? So one, two, three. Okay, and can you give a heart like this? Okay, so three, two, one. Say cheese. Okay, okay, one more pose, everyone. Can you say hi like this? Three two one okay thank you everyone for your participation